Hello, and welcome to Energy Readings with Shelby Aesthetic. This is Shelby Aesthetic. <laughs> I always feel so weird saying that at the beginning um, of the show, because I'm like, well, I've already said my name. How many times can I say it? Anyway, I appreciate everybody that's um, either here live or um, listening to us in archives. If you would like a reading tonight, um, after our discussion, you can call in. The number is 631 353 or three four two, and the show number is seven hundred and twenty. Uh, and then once you call and press one, so I can <clears throat> I can see you. So tonight's guest, she's a repeat. It's Selena V. She's a, she's actually a requested repeat. So I had some some people ask about um, having her back on the show. So I wanted to, of course, for a couple of reasons. One, because um, Selena lives in the same city I do, so I can. This gives me an excuse to talk to her a little bit more. You would think that we would see each other more often, but um, we're all we, one of us. Mostly me is usually too busy to do stuff. So um, it's always awesome to have her on the show. She's going to be doing. Um, we're going to be talking to her about what's going on in her life, as well as having a discussion on. Um, um, ascension, spiritual awakening symptoms, and some of the things that she's experiencing and going through. Um, I love to discuss stuff like this because I always feel like it opens up uh, not just the, the topic for discussion, but it kind of opens um, our minds and our and our um, sense, I guess, our senses, so to speak, to kind of experience everything. Hey, hey Kathleen, hey Marie. Okay, uh, but before we begin. Um, I do want to tell you a little bit about what's coming up. So we have a show October the 24th. That's next week with Corrine DeWinter. Uh, she's been on this show before. She's a purple plate lady, in case you don't know. Um, and since I'm not going to be here Wednesday, um, October 31st, I thought I would do kind of like a fun Halloween-type show on October 24th with Corrine. We're going to pick out some um, interesting stories, some spooky stuff, some you know, fun stuff. It'll be fun. Halloween stuff. And then we will follow it up with some um, on-air readings. The week after that is Halloween, so I won't be doing a show. I have to take my son trick-or-treating. That trumps, like, everything, right? Because there's only so many years that he's going to let me follow him around and trick-or-treat. Um, okay, so the week after that is uh, November. Holy crap. November 7th. Um, God, what happened in 2018? This is like the longest and the slowest year ever uh, at the same time. I don't know how that's possible, but somehow it is. Um, anyway, the guest that week is going to be Sue Broom. Um, I actually met her on Instagram, and we're going to be discussing her journey um, in spirituality and kind of where she is and some of the things that she's doing. She has her own radio show and does uh, on-air readings also, so we're going to plug all that information when we get a little bit closer um, to do the show with her. So she's a new guest, um, and I'm, I'm excited about having her on. So, okay, so if you're listening in archives or on another platform like YouTube or uh, iHeartRadio or Spreaker or wherever, um, we are broadcasting live from Intuitalks.com. Um, I always like to mention about Intuitalks at every one of my shows because I feel very strongly, I have great passion for this network, um, and I feel very strongly uh, that the woman that's doing all of the work behind this, Jenny Davis, I feel very strong to support her and what she's doing because I feel like she's building a community, um, a safe community for, for spiritually minded people um, to be able to come together and um, organize themselves and their thoughts to be able, she's provided a way for um, people to have their own spiritual websites for free. Um, she's made it possible for um, podcasts and broadcasting for your own shows, for your own classrooms. This is a really great platform if you're looking to expand um, yourself uh, spiritually. So, and it doesn't have to be a professional spiritual page. I actually saw a few pages that were just about people's um, spiritual journeys, and everybody should tell their story, because I think even if everybody has, I, I was actually talking to somebody the other day that said they were reluctant to um, continue writing a book they were writing, because, you know, everything's been written already, and 
And uh, I say you should do it anyway because there's always power in our words and we never know who's going to come across what um, and then the connections that we make as a result of them. So I stumbled into Interior Talks from um, somebody telling me to visit Curate the Curious Times radio show and then I've been here ever since because it's such a, a – it's just an amazing community and platform I've met some great people. So check out intuitalks.com. There's a couple of shows coming up this week. I'm not going to go through all of them, um, but quickly, Curious Times, this is with Chris Times. She's going to have Selva on on the 19th and Kimber on the 20th. They do uh, readings on that show. They have some general discussion, and then they do some readings. And then on uh, the 21st, Angel Meadows has a, a, a guest, a couple, on George and Kara. I think that's how you say her name. And then, of course, definitely check out the archives. There was a really great, um, there was a really great show on manifestations. Um, I think it was Jenny's house. I think is what it was, uh, Jenny's house. But check out um, Jenny's um, archives on there for that show. I was telling somebody about it the other day. It's excellent. There's also Teaching Tuesday archives, um, which I also always mention because. Uh, there's just some really great podcasts in there. Towards the very beginning of those archives, I was just listening to uh, one the uh, day before yesterday that I haven't listened to in a long time. Um, but it, there's a lot of stuff in there about not just psychic development, but there, you know, she's got some of her reading stuff on there too. So check it out. Really good stuff. There's some other archives out there also. So check check it all out. There's always stuff going on around here. Um, it's just a great community. So, okay, so let me put my glasses on because now I have to get my, um, now I have to get, that way I can see what people are saying in the chat room. <laughs> okay, gosh. All right, I'm going to bring Selena on now. Hey, Selena. Hey, Shelby. I'm so excited to have you back. Thanks for having me back again. Yeah, I've been, I've been grinning about it all day. I'm like, oh man, this is awesome. I always, I enjoy your energy anyway as a person, and you know how I feel about you, Selena. I, I just, I adore you and I think the world about you. Um, but I'm super um, supportive also in what you're doing and the development that you're going through, that we're all going through. Um, so I want, I love having you on because I feel, I love listening to you read people. I love how you read cards. Oh, thank you. I just got so, some new cards, too, so I'm excited. I don't know if I'll use them today because they're super, super new. But Oh, that's neat. Yeah. So let, so last time you were on here, we were talking a little bit about what you were doing locally. What's going on with that? What's changed? What's new? Um, okay. Well, uh, I still book music um, over at Copper Top Dive and Dine. We just did a, uh, a benefit a couple weeks ago, an open mic, and I, I read poetry at it, which I was – I get a little nervous sometimes speaking. And lately I've been having a problem, like, with my speech, so I was a little, like, hesitant to do it, but I did it anyway. And uh, so the music thing is still going pretty well, and our our zine is going well. I just, uh, last night I wrote a couple of articles and sent those to the GAD zine, which is all about the um, uh, North Alabama Underground Music Directory. I also, um, I did another Red Magic Imports with Spice Radio here in Huntsville where I play music that's coming to upcoming shows, and that was really fun. Um, the guys at Spice Radio are wonderful, and they edit fantastically. So when I listen to them, I, I'm always like, all right. They took out all the, the times I tripped over myself while I was speaking, so that's really good. <laughs> cool. And um, I've been doing uh, readings at the bar at uh, Copper Top, Dive and Dine. Um, uh, originally I was going to try to do them every week, but it just doesn't work that well for me. Um, uh, also I don't read when, when I cycle, so I'm like, well that's one week, a week, you know, th that I have to take off. So I just started doing it the very last, um, uh, Monday, which is also Halloween this month, so I haven't, not doing it this month, but I might actually do it on Halloween. So just, uh, doing it the last, Monday of each month at Copper Top, and that way, um, I, you know, at first I was like, I don't know if people want to come to a bar to get red, but man, each time that I've done it so far, it starts off with like one person, and then another person, and then another person, and before you know it, like the whole bar wants to get their cards red, which oh, is really fun. cool. Yeah, yeah it's fun. really fun. And then it's different doing it in person and doing it, you know, online. It's, it, oh, it's yeah. very different. You can, 
I feel like online I can I can get a really clear connection with the cards because nobody's looking at me. So I can like connect to the person. I can pull out the cards. I can write down all the little things that I want to write down, and then relay the message. Whereas when the person is directly in front of you and you flip a card and they just you see their jaw drop or you see, like like they see the card and you don't even sometimes have to tell them anything about it. It's just like oh. Like that, oh, there it is. Like, it, it's really cool. Oh, and I like that, yeah. Yeah, it's it's really, it, it's fun. There have been some times, though, where I'm like, okay, I need to take a little, like, I read a lot of people back-to-back back last time, and then I got some of the same cards. And, in fact, for these two people, I got, like, almost the exact same cards. But as time has gone on, and I've seen these two people again, I kind of realized why, like, they're developing a relationship and like I was like oh now I get it now I see it. it's like unfolding right in front of me because oh, at first wow. I thought oh man did I did I not shuffle I was, wait a minute I shuffled he shuffled like we all shut like no they were shuffled <laughs> really good there's no way this cannot be correct and um and yeah like I said I've, I've been watching and I've seen them like when I come through and stuff and I'm like that's why their cards were similar because this is what's going on. So this, it's really fun. It that seems is. like every, yeah. When you read them in person, like once in a while, somebody will come up to me in the bar and just hug me and, and be like, you know, thank you so much for the card reading. And it's, you don't know how it impacted my life. And, you know, or they'll say, I'll just see that card in my head when I'm thinking about something. And I'll remember that this is what I'm, you know, supposed to be doing or like all different kinds of ways that, that reading for people affects them. And it's, it's, Pretty awesome. Um, it really, really is. It really it. is. I think so too. Yeah. Hearing feedback, even if it's not just validation, but hearing feedback from your reading and 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 hearing how it affects people and seeing how it affects people, and it, I really feel that's the part of this that I feel is like this is why this is sacred work to me. This is right. why this is incredibly special. This isn't, you know, something. Uh, you know, to just mess around with or to hurt people with. This is a tool that we can use to heal with. So um, I'm not you know, hurting anybody. Special thing. Yeah. Right. You're, and the, thing like, about, the thing is about the cards that you were saying, I remember you saying this last time you were here, the thing about the cards is, especially if they're looking at them when you're throwing them, is they're telling you the truth. Like, you can't really get out of seeing what's on the right. card. You know, you can't really misinterpret you know, some of those, right? I mean, you pretty much know. I'm not too familiar. I'm somewhat familiar with the cards, but I'm not as fluent as you are. Yeah, well, the have, cards can have different meanings depending on the deck. Of course, like, each deck is a different language. That's how I look at them. Like, each time I get a new deck, I'm learning. Uh, but some of them are very similar, like, say, Russian and Polish. Like, you know, they're similar, but they're not exactly the same. And then you've got, like, Lenormand, which is like, woo you know, a whole different set of learning and a whole different set of doing. So, but a lot of them are pretty similar. And, and you have, like, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no. I said it's like learning the different language for each, and, and some of them are the same, which is cool. And then there's oracle cards, which I actually, like, I don't know, cards sometimes just kind of find me. And um, I got this Rome, the Romance Angels oracle deck, which I don't have it. That was the only oracle deck I had. And I was like, well, I don't even know what to do with these. I had to read the book and everything. But um, that's a whole different way of reading cards, too, because it's like the whole description is actually, like, on the card and within the book. And you can pull just one card instead of, like, reading a full story. Like, it, it's different, different that's languages. That's really interesting, actually. So, and, and if I – and correct me if I'm wrong, but you create a lot of your own decks, Right. Sure. And spreads, um, right? The way yeah, I create. Yes, I, I definitely I create spreads. Like sometimes people will have you know questions or certain things that they want to know about, and um, I try to create a or don't try. I do create a spread around that. Uh, like it was someone. Uh, Someone was turning, this is the 11th year, and they were turning. Um, it added up to 11, so I made a. From the justice card, like I used that symbolism and pulled 11 cards and, and created a spread from that to do for her. I call it the scales and it's actually, it's, it's super accurate and it reads like your past, your, your past, your immediate future, your, your 
it's far ahead future, but it also does like a, a three bodies, like the mind, body, spirit, like where you're at in all of those bodies. It does a message from the higher self. It does, I mean, it, there's a lot that goes on to that reading. And I just, I developed it because it was somebody's birthday and, and they wanted to really get in there. And I've done it a, a few times now and each time it has come out like incredibly accurate. And I can also read with playing cards, which was something that, that I picked up by making decks out of cards, just by, like, not having the money or not really knowing that all of that's available all the time. So I started making them out of regular playing cards, and then I figured, well, heck, I'll just learn how to use regular playing cards, and, and I can read people just with a regular deck of cards. Well, that's what one of the things that I remember one of the things that I saw at your house, I think it was last time I was there, was a regular deck of playing cards that you had done something to to make them, you know, your own deck. Yeah, I, I have um, a Lenormand deck that I made myself. I have a Lavera Sibilla deck, which I don't know that well yet. And that's, um, yeah, those are pretty, like, that's, that goes, like, with the Spanish decks where they, they have a different feel and a different flavor to them. Just just like different languages, do, or, you know, different um, countries, different parts of the world have a different feeling to them. Like, right. different, there are different entity decks of cards are the same way. And that's so do you feel it. like when you... Or doing a reading. Do you, oh, okay. So you're saying that the deck has a, the the personality, right? So the deck is the person right. has a language or whatever. Right. Well, it, the, so the when you're doing a reading, yeah. or you do you wait to meet the person before you choose the deck that you're going to use, or do you just like carry like a, you know, like your handy dandy deck around with you everywhere, and then have like some fancy decks that you keep for special occasions, or how do you decide, and how do you know what spread to use? Like, or is this all? You followed your intuition through this. Uh, sometimes, and then sometimes there's just a new spread that I want to learn. Like um, the last time I did Red Magic at um, Copper Top, it, it was a full moon. So I looked up full moon spreads, and I found one, and we we just did that spread on everybody all night long so that I could learn it, and um, and it was a full moon. So uh, sometimes I pull up other people's spreads and just and, and learn those, you know, because, I mean, really it's all an intention. It's what you want to get mm-hmm. from the reading. And then, you know, before when a person sat down, I told them, you know, well, today, tonight's the full moon. I've pulled up this reading. These are what the cards are going to mean. Do you want to do this reading? And if they don't, then we can do something else. Like if they have a specific question or something that they want to have answered differently. I think I did a couple Celtic crosses that night and some past, present, futures, too, for people who didn't want to, to do the full moon reading. But I... They, you know, let them know ahead of time, this is what we're going to do. You know, are you okay with that? If not, we can try something else because it's their yeah, reading. Well, and I love, my favorite thing is that you make readings and or you make decks and spreads for people. Like I had um, Kathleen on a few weeks ago, and she was talking about, pro, you know, crystals and picking crystals out for the, you know, person, like your program right. for the person. This is so similar to that and then I guess you can use them on other people as you see fit. Oh, but absolutely. I just find that fascinating. It's like a such a really cool moment um to be able to intuitively design um something like the just saying you do that on the spot too. I have, yeah. I have, depending on what their question is and what's going on with them. Yes. Well you're I'm like I'm in awe. I mean, you're so talented anyway, and creative, and then you know, doing. I, I don't know if you understand how cool that is. Well, you know, like you're all chill about it, but I'm like, what the hell? You're designing decks like like they're like all the time you do it. You're like, I made a new deck today. I'm like, what? I just I just think it's awesome. I love it. I I can't wait to till you design some and start selling them because those are going to be right? cool. Like um, I've been uh, listening to a lot of young like um during my day job. Like, I, I can't really read all the time, but I can certainly listen to stuff. And I've been listening to a lot of his. I, I created a spread based on your persona, your shadow self, your anima, animus, and the self, and how to read where you are currently with all of those. And um, he has archetypes. And I am I just went out and bought a deck of cards, and I was like, all right, this deck of cards is going to be my young deck. And so I'm learning what his archetypes are. I'm going to turn that deck of cards into a young reading. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Well, so let's talk a little bit about, uh, you mentioned 
the speech problem earlier, and we had talked earlier about um, talking about ascension and some of the symptoms that kind of come along with that. And I know that you have been, and you don't have to go into anything that you're not comfortable with, but I know that you've been experiencing, um, I guess, what people call the ascension or the awakening over the past several, well, really our whole life, but it's gotten really intense. What, the past two years, would you say? Yeah, a, year, oh, a, a little like over two years, yeah. It, it got like, yeah, about, yeah, a little over two years ago, it got very immense, like it was a massive purging and uh, clearing and cleaning out. Then I started seeing that little energy sperm out of the corner of my eye, which is still there to this day. Not all the time or constant, but just now and then I'll see it. And I didn't at first know what it was. I think eye doctors call them, what do they call them? I forget. I looked it up. But they have a word for something similar to that. But it's basically, it's like prana and it's it's energy. And mm-hmm. um, I found some old, like, Hindu pictures and stuff where they have those symbols on it. And I was like, ah, oh, that's what it is. It's not necessarily an ocular disorder. I'm just seeing this. But it's always the same particular one. And then, um, yeah, the massive purging. And then, you know, there are some things that I've just always been able to do, but I was able to keep them more in my head. And... Mm-hmm. Uh, I started noticing with my speech, especially, which, I mean, it happened, it would happen simultaneously, like, not simultaneously, but sporadically, like, years ago, like, I walked past this woman, and I, like, smelled her, and I was like, so how's your baby doing? And then she's like, I just had a baby, but the baby had passed away, and I was like, oh, my God, I feel like such a schmuck, I'm so sorry. And so I was like, oh, okay, well, that just kind of, I didn't mean, you know, just for that to pop out. But lately, Mm -hmm. it's been things where it's like, Things that are inside of other people's heads, and so I've just been staying quiet lately. And I'm like, I need to just be quiet. Instead of blurting out, instead of blurting out things, like I'm like the images. Oh when I see an image, I'm like, it's okay. I can just settle that back. That's not a big deal. But when you actually, and some of the things are not good. You know, they're not bad things. They're just. Kind of like, you know, silly things. And then I'm like, oh, my God, I can't believe I just said that. And the person's looking at me like, I can't believe you just said that. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We connected for a minute. I picked up on it. But I'm sorry. I'm kind of like, I'm on way now. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Oh, my God, yeah. I bet that's awful. Well, I actually, I had pulled a couple things off the Internet, um, too, before, this, before we were talking just to kind of – I was trying to simplify this. So – you know, when we talk about ascension or we hear people talking about a spin- ascension, a spiritual ascension or their spiritual awakening or spiritual awakenings, because um, I think that that's a pretty popular term, spiritual awakening. We talk about um, the different types of um, ascensions or awakenings. So supposedly, now take it or leave it, people, <laughs> that according to this website, there are five types of spiritual ascensions that uh, I'm just going to kind of pop through some of these and Selena, you tell me if you can uh, relate to any of these. There was a couple I could. So the first type is supposed to be the awakening of the mind. And this type of awakening comes to you when you experience a major epiphany or sudden mental realization. That's kind of what you were just talking about. Uh, A deep understanding does not necessarily translate into integrated experience, but it does feel like an an astonishing flash of enlightened perspective that can help you mentally understand life. Um, I think we experience those little pieces all throughout life. I mean, I can even remember having uh, spiritual epiphanies as a teenager, and then I'm like, nah, I think I'd rather be a teenager. And, you know, off I went, ignoring those. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah, um, I think those things kind so of happen often. all the time. Yeah, yeah. So then it, and it kind of makes you wonder too. With the, with with the ascension, is it like a clicking to- uh, a clicking a ticking clock that you know at a certain day and time have our souls decided that's when we're waking up, or is it a series of pro- if we truly have free will, then is it a series of process that we go through um, and hopefully pick the right. <laughs> the right choices in life to get to things. I mean, who knows, right? I guess maybe we can decide whether or not we want to be awake before we ever get here. We don't. Who knows? Right? Who knows? Um, the next one is called the awakening of a new personality, which I can – I have done this also my whole life as I have these epiphanies and become uh, more aware of things. But, again, I don't know if I would call this a spiritual a symptom, I think it just comes with age, right? Like you become a different, you know, better person than you were. 
Right, or at least a different person than you were. Yeah, I think that that comes a lot with age. Certainly, you know, 41 years old, I'm not the same person I was at 21 years old. In fact, the last few years... Thank you. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, there's no way. There's just no way. I think that that comes definitely with age and with experience and and choice and deciding that, you know, maybe I didn't like being that way, so I'm not going to be anymore. You know, maturity. Yeah, exactly. Physical, physical and emotional experience. Maturity, that's exactly right. Uh, the third one listed is awakening of spiritual energy. So spiritual ascension can sometimes refer to awakening spiritual energy within the body and energy field. When life force energy, commonly referred to as prana or kundalini, is awakened, major changes can occur on the physical through spiritual levels. Did you experience any of that stuff, Selena, like electrical feelings or energy rushes or anything like that? All oh, my freaking life that I can remember. Mm. Like I was, I joined this, uh, I, I don't know, I went through, uh, recently I was like, I'm just, I'm going to join some groups. And I, I joined a group and I told them the story uh, today about how when I was like 11 and 12 years old, I used to see this, this orb, they were talking about orbs. And I, you know, I used to see this when I was like 11 and 12 years old. And then I ended up, you know, later having my old son. And I've always believed that that's where, that's who that orb was. And, um, so I, I don't know. I think that different times throughout my life, even as a kid, I can remember having like spiritual moments, at least like sitting on the side of the beach or, you know, different places or even on the school bus and being angry and mad and, and even having spiritual experiences through that, like knowing that I wasn't just like this body, that there was something mm-hmm. more than that. Um, I mean, yeah, I can think of like lots of different instances where you know that that it's like, hey, I'm here, turn around, or you know, like you know, spirit being like, hey, um, is that what they're meaning, or they? I mean, yeah, I think any of it. I think the ability to feel and understand energy, and what I've noticed too is the more that you come to discern, uh, especially your energy and spirit, spirit mm-hmm. energy, when you when you come to discern those things, like you were talking, it gets stronger. So, um, and there's been, and as a matter of fact, I've had experiences with spirit where, um, and not knowing what was going on at the time, I was very scared because I didn't understand it. I thought, I thought something was being aggressive with me, but, um, I'm just, I'm very sensitive and it's, so it's important for me to keep my energy clear and stuff. Cause when I don't, and spirit does come, it's strong and it gets stronger oh, yeah. and stronger and stronger. Um, it's specifically energy surges. I thought that was, um, I definitely related to that. Um, and I could relate with what you were talking about with John, your son. I remember being, um, it, it was 18 years old. It was about a year before I, I moved away into Alabama. I, uh, was laying in my backyard looking up at the trees and I saw, uh, I saw my son. <laughs> just this image in, and I just at the time I'm like oh, okay this you know like maybe I had too much or whatever but <laughs> right but later right. When I had him, there was this specific moment when I looked at his eyes and I knew that he had been with me the whole time so that I mean that's not necessarily about the energy surges but when you said that about your son I'm like oh, I can relate to that so so much the orbs at night you know waking you up and floating around, you know, your house, like, hey, let's, and like, it's three o'clock in the morning. We're not talking right now. So <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> not in the mood right now. <laughs> uh, but I, I clearly remember one incident, and this is, uh, you know, I, I was in a very deep, dark time before my, what I would call the, the ultimate blowout of my spiritual um, awakening or ascension or whatever you want to call it, because I feel like it continues. I don't feel like those things stop, but um, okay. I'll, never for, I'll never forget, I uh, I was in a, just this dark place, and I, I couldn't, uh, I could never shake, it turns out I was overloaded with people's, other people's energy, but I couldn't shake the feeling that I was just drowning, no matter what I was doing, and I couldn't, I couldn't, no matter what was happening, I just, I just couldn't, I was always overwhelmed, it was like this uh, I was caked in anxiety and, and feelings and just, and I couldn't sort through it. So I remember, um, uh, at one point I said, I'm, it was, and I didn't even meditate. I don't know why the hell I decided to do this, but I said, I'm just going to try to meditate for a minute. I'm just going to see what happens. I'm just going to try to silence my mind because I had been crying and, and I thought, yeah. I can't keep living life like this. 
and I sat down and I closed my eyes and I concentrated. I was there long, uh, but a, a, a gold face appeared to me and it was spinning around. So I couldn't, uh, I wasn't really sure what was happening. And it rushed towards me so fast and smacked me right in my third eye. So the energy hit me so hard, I almost literally fell backwards on the, on the floor. And my, I had this tingling sensation. Uh, that went all over my body, and it was in that moment I, that I said, oh, okay, maybe there's a little more to life here that I need to be thinking about, you know, it was right? just like one of those, right? wake the up, you know, it was like, stop, get off of yourself like that, and get up, and it's time to, it's time to get up, shall we, it's time to get up, so it was just this real, uh, it scared the hell out of me, but it yep. was, it was also an amazing, I needed it. Delaney, you know me. I'm oh, yeah. tiny, bit hard headed, and I don't. I, it takes. Uh, I'm like, I feel like I cover myself in oil all the time. I just kind of slide around, like, because I just, I'm like, oh, I just want to avoid conflict. Oh, I want to avoid this or you know stuff I have to do. So I just kind of slide around everywhere. Oh, anyway. Um, okay, so the fourth one is awakening of the soul, which the soul's already awake, right? Right, I would think so. Well, let's see what this one well, I guess says. Then, but I guess it isn't for everybody. So what, what is the description of awakening for the soul? Yeah. What does it describe yeah. it as? Well, I guess in a way, if it's not connected to you, it's probably, yeah. Okay, so let me just read it. Oh, Jenny will like this one. Okay. Soul awakenings can be brief and sudden or long and drawn out. Brief soul awakenings are often referred to in Zen Buddhism as Satori, which is, I hope I'm saying that right, Satori which is the experience of seeing into one's true eternal nature. This glimpse of enlightenment is often short and doesn't last very long, one moment to a few days. And on the other hand, long-term soul awakenings are experienced as a deepening of contact with the soul. This could involve uh, consistently uniting with one's soul purpose, uh, spirit guides, or higher self, and thereby understanding and beginning to experience oneself as eternal and limitless. Wow. Okay, so that's not exactly what I thought it was. That's cool. I like that. Yeah. You can understand that soul connection or your guide connection. Ascended Masters, I know you work with the, a lot of that inner, that higher energy too. Uh, let's see. Now the fifth one, Selena, is the total awakening. <laughs> The total awakening. This is the ultimate. Yeah, this is the total awakening. It says enlightenment or total ego death is a rare experience in which the self dissolves and all that remains is unity with all. This state is called by many names, oneness, maksha, non-dual awareness, uh, Buddhahood, illumination, and so forth. Such an intense state of being can arise spontaneously or through years of spiritual study. In both in, but in both instances, total awakening is a gift of grace. It isn't something that we can achieve in the normal sense of the word. When enlightenment occurs, there's an experience of being both nothing and everything all at once. It is a state that transcends thought and the mind itself. It is a mystical awakening. The ego is finally seen, understood, and overcome, and all that remains is the pure awareness, presence of love, and truth. That's that's the state we're all trying to get in, right? Kind of. I guess. But we also want to have our experiences here. So I think that's where I think that's where the big um, emergence is happening right now is there's such a uh, duality with um, spirituality and bringing that into your daily life and making that part of your life and your experiences and the things that you do. Because anything can be a spiritual experience. Right. Absolutely. I mean, there's not, anything. I mean, there's e- even experience. bad experiences. Well, I, they're not bad. They're just. It's a judgment you place on them as to whether it is good or bad, yes. Right. Which, I don't know, may, making judgments helps in the fact that you know, like, how something worked or did not work for you, and therefore, whether you will repeat it or not repeat it. So it has a place in in everything. But um, I don't know, I guess that is, like, what everybody's trying to achieve, and as long as, I don't know, I was watching something today, and it's like, as long as you're trying to achieve this, you're never going to get there. It's the place that you already are. And it's like, okay, 
So we're already here in this oneness. This is how it is. But we're also in all of these individual bodies at the same time having these different experiences. Oh, no. I think that I've probably had some experiences of oneness, but I don't think they lasted very long or enlightenment. Like, I don't know. I think that it helped to get to a next place where, you know, I, you take the, some, I've taken some of those experiences with me, but right. but well, you're in that saying, state all the time. How is it possible? I don't right, know. Or, is, or do you want to? Or do you, or do you want to? Because I don't think, I don't think everybody does. And I think purposely the soul doesn't, doesn't, um, comes here, to, you know, sometimes this is just my opinion, but and purposely chooses as a personality not to wake up, not to have that connection because they want to disconnect. Uh, they want right. the total experience of being, this place is awesome. Earth is amazing, right? right. This is like, this I mean, is, this is realization of, of source, of God, if you will. Now, this also says that there's the belief that there are 12 levels of ascension also, so... Um, that's interesting, which I, I I could see that, right? Everything's in layers anyway. I yeah. don't know about 12. Yeah. Uh, they teach you that in verses, which do all the different layers of everything. Yeah. Well, and that stuff's awesome. And I think, I think that I'm always talking about layers and I think layers are, are important to, to look at. I don't know if there's really 12, but this is what, you know, we're just reading here. Right. Right. I don't know if there's really 12 either. What I was, Laughing so hard at earlier. So this is like the side of um, a pill bottle. It says, um, what are some other physical or emotional symptoms of ascension? You may find discomfort, aches, pains, headaches, change of relationship, bursts of energy running through you, heightened sensitivity, uh, moodiness, uh, feelings of wanting to go home, intense dreams or unusual sleep patterns. And so, you know, the whole time I'm reading this, I'm like, God, that's like me once a month. That's my whole life. That's <laughs> like my whole life. <laughs> I was up at three last night. A week, like, <laughs> we must be ascending really fast then, right? <laughs> right? Like, and it's been happening like this forever. You know, I think, honestly, I think more of that enlightenment is, is the things we were talking about earlier, like the ascension symptoms, as far as, like, like when you're standing next to someone and you, you have those moments where you hear – or you you hear those thoughts, or you yes, um, or agree. you pick up on their energy. I mean, that's that at one minute. That's where we're moving towards, and and I think you know eventually all humans will be able to to you know interact with one another without having to to talk and things like that. I think that's where we head to. But you remember, then then we lose privacy. You know, we lose the you know. I don't want that. I think that's I think like, all the well, time. I, and you and I have talked about that. I think yeah. that's going to be that's the hardest part. I, I think transition for most people because I'm a very private person myself. I don't like people, you know, in my in my business. I I just like I say to myself, oh, I don't really talk to a whole lot of people, and it's not because I don't like people or want to be around people. I'm just a private person. I don't have. I'm not really like that. So yeah, I I totally get that. I don't want. I get that. You know, I, yeah. I, yeah, I spend I a too. lot of time alone. I take my dog and walk on the mountain or, you know, that, I, that's a choice. It's not that, oh, you don't have any friends. It's like, no, nah, sometimes I just, I like to be in my own stuff and and be able to, to do that. So uh, that, that's another thing, like they talk about being in large groups and people can feel other people's feelings and stuff like that. And I think that's what, you know, just kind of where humanity is moving and that that's like that joined this group called um uh, awakenings for empaths empath awakenings and i was reading through that stuff the last couple of days and it's all about you know feeling other people's feelings and all these different things and how do you you know boundaries and stuff like that and it's like that that is you know moving towards that at one minute and it's like okay well you're not responsible for other people's feelings and other people aren't responsible for your feelings. So whether you're an empath or not an empath, you're going to have to learn how to, how to create exactly those boundaries. Right. And exactly you're going to have to learn also, not to expect – I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I'm with you. I was saying you can't expect because you're an empath for other people to, to monitor their feelings around you or monitor themselves around you. You have to become an empowered empath. 
and be able to be like, well, no, these are my feelings and those are your feelings. And even just because I can feel them doesn't mean that I have to. I think that that's something through the, you know, through ascension and enlightenment that we're going to have to learn how to do is, you know, learn what belongs to us and what doesn't. But eventually, if we all belong to one big thing, show me we're going to be able to do that. Well, I you think know? that's part of it, though, is shedding is shedding all of this stuff and and being oh being okay with the openness and the oneness. Like we're not we're just not there right now, and it's okay no. too. Like I don't, uh, you know, walk around saying, you know, I'm like this enlightened being, and so you know my my ego is dead, and I you know that's I I I can't relate to that. So that's not, I and I don't I I don't have the I don't have that experience because I still very much. Um, deal with the day-to-day ego part of myself but in layers I have had uh, what people would consider ego death so and if you're talking about energy then there then and I always compare it to cells because cells are very similar you know there's there's they're just it's made up of uh, and designed specifically to do um, these tasks can be pushed around by by other you know cells and things that are happening energy is exactly the same way and it can be moved so when people talk about uh, manifesting and being and doing things with manifestation and, and, and things like that. I believe those things can happen because you you can push and move energy, but it's all this other stuff I was talking about early, specifically, especially empathic people tend to carry a lot of other people's junk in their energy. Yeah. So how are you supposed to manifest past all of those thought forms and those things? And you can't. It's not, you can't. Right. It doesn't get past. Uh, certain, you know, certain parts of your, um, of your, of your energy body. But yeah. I can also be, so a couple of years ago, this lady died. She was, I wasn't close to her. I wasn't really friends. I actually went to the, uh, funeral to support someone else. And I'm like crying at, I, I just felt so freaking sad. Like I was, I could not stop crying. It was the craziest thing. I know now what it was. Uh, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm this, this ungrounded, uh, unclear, in, sensitive empath walking into a funeral home. What you know? What did I think was going to happen? So, but I didn't realize it at the time. At the time, I just thought, well, gosh, I guess I just I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know why I'm crying like this. Um, but there's been signs my whole life about different things picking other people's energy up. Uh, if I would have paid attention uh, and understood what it was, then I probably could have managed it much better at a younger age but i didn't understand that until later you know i did, i yeah. couldn't comprehend uh if I, I just couldn't comprehend it i didn't understand it but when once the discernment comes in uh everything changes i mean big time i don't know about you but yeah. uh especially if i'm in like a really terrible mood i can usually trace it back to uh the you know if i'm around somebody i can usually trace it right back to whoever uh, it belongs to. And then I know it's not me. Great. So and then as soon as you know it's not you, you can send it back. Just right. send it away. You don't even have to send it back to that person. You can just be like, this does not belong to me. And just, like, kick it to the side. Like, I've even had where, like, physical things from other people I like, picked up. And I've been like, why the hell do I have this sore inside my nose? And then I realized such and such a person had such and such a thing. And I was like, are you serious? I was like, is this really happening right now? I'm like, this isn't even my symptom. And I picked it up somewhere. Like, that's, that's another thing that I've had happen. Like, I looked at a woman at a music festival, and then I ended up with this door on my face. And I was like, fucking crap, I picked that up from that lady. I was like, I know I did, because I looked right at her. I looked, like, right at her. And then I was like, ah, oh, I picked something up, and it turned into a physical manifestation. And I was like, really? I was like, this is now, I, now it's something else I have to learn that I'm capable of and how to change. Right, but then you begin that, that goes right? back to the that goes back to the empowerment, which is the whole the whole point of, uh, of the, is having your power is having your power, not giving it away to everybody else all the time. Right, exactly. And then that's what happened. It's like we did an exchange. So I picked up some of her stuff, and she got some of my healing. And it's like you realize as a healer that you're capable of doing that. And it's like, gosh darn it, I can't believe I did. Hold on one second. 
Okay, it's okay. All right, so we're about like halfway through, so it's 6.40, I mean 7.45 Eastern. Uh, sorry, that was show, my son. He was moving. I'm sorry. No, it's perfectly fine. And the show does end, um, it's supposed to end at 7.30. So since we're about halfway through, um, if you want a reading tonight, I've got three people, 707, 518, and 614 that have called in. Um, if you want a reading, now is the time to call in. Uh, to the show, the number is 631-353-4342, and the show number is 700 and then 20, so 70020 um, as the show number. And then once you're once you're in, it, I'll see you. If you press one, then I will know that you uh, that you want a reading. So I do have we do have a couple of people, Selena. Great. Can I ask you one question? Because I'm sorry, like my son knocked on the door when I was talking about the exchange of energy where I knew that like I had picked up something physical from her and meaning that I also gave something like some healing to her. Has that ever happened to you where you picked yes. up any type of physical no, thing? Is- all the time, actually. Not as much anymore, but for a while there. I, I find it fascinating the types of abilities that people are talking about and that are, I wouldn't say they're emerging as new, but just um, and I don't know if anybody listening is part of different, um, you know, some of the different platform or forums and stuff out there about psychic stuff. But there's a couple that I'm involved in um, where people are, they're very much talking about uh, t- using telepathy and telekinesis and things like that um, and practicing with those things. But it all is sourced from, uh, you know, coming from, of course, doing energy work or meditations. And some of these are happening to people spontaneously um, where they're having, um, other people's thoughts in their heads or just mm. different things like that. And in, in the beginning of, you know, when things like that are happening, um, you don't know what's going on. You just like, I, I mean, it just sounds, it's just, it just doesn't make sense. At least it didn't for me picking up uh, no. people's images and thoughts and feelings and the things that they were thinking about and, uh, you know, different things like that. And I'm with you because I do feel like as we progress, Especially these younger generations of um, of people, kids in the United States right now, I feel like they're it very much is going to progress into abilities becoming way more prevalent, way stronger. When we were kids, uh, Selena and I don't know about you in Chicago and how things were. I know for me when I was living, um, you know, in the Midwest, it just what you know psychic stuff. Uh, it was crystal ball stuff, you know, tarot, all that stuff. It was okay to, you know, just talk about or laugh a little bit about, but it just wasn't something that you just didn't really, it just wasn't a thing. Um, no, it's not a thing for yeah. people. Right, and they, it, you would practically get attacked for talking about it. Um, and even when it's I moved still here to Alabama, yes, well, here, uh, yeah. where we are, it, it, it can be really interesting how people's perceptions are of it, but, um, I mean, so, but the the amount of uh, opening, the embracement that people, and maybe it's because of television. I don't know. You know, they put those psychics on television that kind of maybe softened the way people looked at at um, spirituality or psychic work. Maybe. Maybe. But, like, I, I know growing up, it was, like you said, it was something that you could joke about or make fun about. But it was no longer something that people passed on, like, from one generation to the next. Mm-hmm. Because the generation prior to ours made them all crazy, you know, and gave them shock treatment and put people who, who were probably just having experiences through even, you know, worse things in order to, you know, try to control it and yeah, like when I was growing up, if you heard voices or you saw things that weren't there, then you were you were crazy, and mm-hmm. you know, so it wasn't something that you could like really talk about with anybody that was you know comfortably. Like I remember telling a friend of mine about that sphere, and she told me, "Oh yeah, I see it." She didn't; she, she was lying, and I was like, "I need." And then it just put this fear like to stop telling people when you, when these things happen. But I still always have on and off, especially you know about people passing and stuff like that. And I like talking about energy. I think it's something that we, we should do more and more often. With yeah, I agree. Common household. Common household. Yeah. Well, you do that with your kids and you've always you've Absolutely. always been that way. And we are we are with our with our son too. He actually we actually are we homeschooled last year and um this year and I try to 
um, at just the what he's willing to kind of – I don't force anything on him, of course. I kind of let him um, decide that how, – how deep he wants to go into the spirituality. But, um, you know, to teach him some of that kind of open his own mind up to some of that. But kids are so much different because they still have – uh, especially at my son's age, because they're not quite old enough to have given up on the magic of life yet. Right. <laughs> so they still kind of believe. I mean, my son was trying to trap leprechauns in the house a couple of weeks ago. So nice. uh, they're, still, they're still like this very playful, magical um, part of him that he wants to experience things and believe in things, um, and specifically with energy and um, working with his energy you know, in the beginning, it was like he was so annoyed by it, and he just didn't want to do it. And he's to a point now where he actually can center his own heart and ground it into the earth by himself. I'm just, I'm like so proud of him. Uh, but those are the things that our kids are doing, Selena, naturally anyway. I mean, and yeah. the fact that they, to me, the fact that we have these conversations with them um, and do have their minds open to things, to me, I think that's, that's the evolution that needs to take place in our society. We need to we need to be more spiritually minded and open minded and work more with um, tolerance and love and that's all this messy and embrace men more with it instead of a constant like pushing them away. Like embrace them with it more. Like I have some to it some, and so boys can tend to you know they're more you know whatever side of the brain it is. And, like, my oldest will come in the house and he'll be like, I was thinking about so-and-so, and then she called me, and then, and then, and then, and I get that from you. And it's like, yeah, you do. Yeah, but then when yeah it's yeah. embracing it. And it, 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 it yes, and, and noticing, like, this is just the way that energy works. This is just the way that things are. And, in, you know, instead of, I think especially with boys get, you know, turned off from that, you know, young age so much because they're supposed to be this and they're supposed to be that. And if they do embrace those aspects of themselves, then, then you know, it takes away something from their masculinity. Mm-hmm. And and now with what's happening in the world so much, and, and I don't want to look at it, it, it negatively. I try not to watch a lot of the news or read things about it. And, and yes, people coming out and speaking out is, is, is a good thing, but it, there's, also, a, a lot of fear that comes up with it along as well. I'm not, I'm not saying this correctly how I mean it, especially, you know, for younger generations where it's like these different realms that you can't speak about things or talk about things. Mm-hmm. Or it, it, it's less of a, a, it's creating less comfortability, if that makes any kind of sense. Yeah. Um, between men and women. I mean, I think it's, I don't know how to say it right. Because I'm, I mean, I agree with people that nobody should be hurt or harmed or do, done things, you know, out of perspective, you know, that they don't want to have done to them. But then there are other things where people don't always have the best intention of why they come out of Yeah, them. yeah, exactly. No, you're, it's, you're saying it, you're saying it perfectly. I, I, I understand what you're saying. It's okay. You're saying it perfectly. And see, that's one of those, uh, ascension signs or, uh, senses we're talking about, Selena. I can't <laughs> talk. I can't talk. It won't come out. My brain is thinking it, but it's not coming out. And then, you know, like, and then it is, it becomes that fear of, you know, offending people and not being mm. heard the way that you mean it to, to come across. That is something that I think has become a part of society. Like, um, but and we won't have to worry about that pretty soon, right? Because we'll all understand how we feel, <laughs> right? Well, with, yeah. with with the ability to be able to do. And uh, I heard a podcast the other day, actually, that um, it was it was. Um, Kathleen Moore, I think, on Curious Times. It was one of those shows. I think it was, I think it was a week before. I can't remember. Anyway, it was recently. But she was talking. Um, she was talking about. Um, I just totally lost my train of thought trying to figure out <laughs> trying to figure out what she was talking about. Anyway, all right. I guess it's just not meant to be said. It's fine. Okay, so we're going to take some readings, Selena. I just, I totally, I just got like pulled right out of my head, whatever I was about to say. It's weird. 
Okay. I guess it's time to move on then. I guess so. I guess so. Okay. So uh, there are a couple of people, and I'm not sure that all of them are calling um, for a reading, but we'll we'll unmute them. And if they are, great. If not, that's okay too, because we can always continue to talk about energy where we can go. Absolutely. Right. Either way. Either way. I'm happy. Okay. So the first. Um, Five one eight is the first one I'm gonna. Are you ready, Selena? Do you need a minute or? Um, I think I'm alright. I'll hear the person's voice and you know see what kind of question they have. I've got my cards here in front of me and I got some oh. really cool new ones. I might want to mess around with them just to do. Before it. we go on to, can you tell people how to reach you, Selena, if they want to get in touch with you? Um, yeah, I have a Facebook page. It's um, uh, Red Magic Selena. It's on Facebook, and you can look at it. Look, look up Red Magic, and it will come up. I am getting a site put together for my little dot com, Red Magic Selena, and then I do have an Intuit Talks page, but I haven't worked on it in a little while. So um, you can also message there. But Facebook is probably the easiest one because that page's manager comes up right away. Okay, and so I will do readings for trade. I'll do them for money. I'll, you know, do them just for, you know, sometimes just for, just to do them. But, and you're on Instagram. Are you on Twitter? I, I, no, I'm not on Twitter and I cannot for the life of me figure out how to use Instagram. Okay, no big deal. Oh, I, I, I do post things on there. I, I do post remember. things on there. Yeah. So what Kathleen was talking about the other day. I'm laughing about myself. Okay. So she was talking about uh, abilities and she didn't like to call them gifts because she didn't feel like you were, it was like, you know, she wanted to call them, it was ability, the ability to do something. And I loved that because I felt like, I mean, I related to that for one thing because I feel like what you were saying, we're all going to a place where we're all going to have this. Uh, way that we communicate mm-hmm. and I and differently probably right because you pick up energy way differently than I do or way, or way differently than you know whoever else does so that's the unique right. part about it so we're going to be able to communicate with each other with different types of abilities I just think that at this point everybody needs to um, is to turn in and to start figuring out how they um, can um, relate to energy in that way or, or have some discernment because I, I, there's probably a lot more people out there that are, um, that have these abilities but just don't understand that they do. Agreed. And just, just walking around completely oblivious and I'm saying that because I was that person. Yeah. <laughs> I was that, per- I remember my wife was watching, uh, Teresa Caputo one night, right? This was years ago. Mm-hmm. And I go, I walk in, and I'm like, this is lady, this is crap. This is, I, she's not real. These people aren't, psychics are just, and I, I just couldn't stand the fact <laughs> that it was real. I was, it was bothering me. And I remember going to work the next day, and, and I was talking to my boss about something, and she brought up the same, the, whatever that show was. Uh-huh. And I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, what is the deal with you people? Like, <laughs> like I just don't. And at the time, I was like, I think it's just because I didn't like the idea that somebody could do that. Like, it bothers me. I don't want people looking at it. they had a gift you didn't have, you know? <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't even that. It was that I, I was, I didn't, I don't, I didn't feel good enough about myself as a human being that I wanted anybody looking at who I truly was because I felt so bad about myself. Aww. So I had a lot of to work through but I mean of course later on I'm like I do I, I love her show I think it's a great show um, but I think that her show and some of the other ones really did kind of set the tone for a lot of um, people to be able to sort of what you know whether you like her or not she she's been a catalyst in this uh, movement or PLC or whatever, Bravo or whatever channel she's on she's been a catalyst for um, people becoming more um, open-minded. My mom went from some, like she used to scream at me not to talk about stuff like this because she was terrified of it. She had somebody at the very end who was communicating with um, her own mother. She was telling me stories about how uh, her own mother who had passed away would um, she would feel like she was poking her like like her skin and then flicking mm-hmm. lights on and off in the house all the time and uh you know, being playful, she wasn't scared of it, which I found bizarre because she's been terrified of that stuff her entire life. But before she died, I uh, came out of the psychic closet to her, thinking it was going to be, like, awful. 
Um, and it wasn't. It wasn't at all. It was actually a pretty. It was actually a pretty beautiful thing. So people are opening up to the idea. Um, you know, that Good. spirituality and a, and and a, an awakening exists. I know because I've been trying to talk to my own family about it forever. I'm like, well, I saw you in my head, but blah blah blah, and that's where you were. And they're just like, yeah, okay, you just knew we were there. And I was like, no, yeah, I knew you were there because of this. And they're like. Yeah, we're not talking about that. <laughs> just like, we're not talking about that. We're just not going to talk about that. And I'm like, all right, fine. But, yeah. So, but it is definitely becoming a more of a normal thing uh, mm -hmm. for more people to discuss. I've actually, I'm very bad with names, but I started looking up, like, uh, people who had made certain, like, tarot decks and stuff like that that people posted. So I was like, well, let me look up the, the person who made it. And then that, that's been interesting because sometimes it's kind of like, music like you love the song and then when yeah. you look up who the people were you're you're like oh well there's people behind that song. <laughs> i really love the song still and it, it's been it's been kind of interesting it's, it, it is to see the the faces that go along with these images and and the mindsets and the way that that people talk about spirituality and what brought them to different places and everybody has a story i mean that's what we all are mm -hmm. just a bunch of you know we're all a story that on this planet, uh, this one guy I was looking at today. He's another channeler, and um, which I don't know. I'm, I've been a fan of Neil Donald Walsh. Like I found him many years ago, and his conversations with God books. But I think one of the reasons I, I always liked those was because even though he was doing automatic writing, and yes, it was coming through him, he was having a conversation with another person. And when they take the, the channelers, it always kind of freaks me out because I'm like they have another person inside of them. I'm like, oh my God, there's a person inside of us. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it looks so odd. Like, that was with the Abraham Hicks. When I first started listening to that, I was like, oh my God, there's this like, an invasion of space. And even right. though it's the same idea, though, like, he was writing on a piece of paper, it was coming through his body. Just, I don't yeah. know, maybe it's the visual seeing that made it so different, but it was just like. Yeah. I know what I mean. I was like, he's possessed. He's like, it's, it's temporary, but it's still possession. Then we should all laugh. channeling. I shouldn't laugh because I've done. I did the same thing. I'm like, I'm not gonna let no spirits in my body. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I understand. I do. I, but I think it's that. It's really that. That movie messed me up when I was a child. Right? I mean, it totally messed me up when I was a kid, too. And so I was like, you know, think, what's the difference between channeling and possession? <laughs> right. Oh well, and I didn't know. At the time, I didn't know. And I didn't understand the difference. And I mean, you well, know, it's just, people just don't understand. I find I find all the different ways to communicate with spirit, with spirit really uh, amazing. Um, physical mediumship is really uh, quite interesting. And, of course, EVP, you know, when people yeah. do the um, – I guess it's like radio static. I'm not really sure how how it works. And of course, then there's all kinds of divination. There's the coffee, uh, the coffee and tea readings. Now you do some of those, don't you? Sometimes, the coffee yeah. grounds. Um, I haven't done no. I haven't done coffee grounds or tea leaves. But I have like a pendulum. I bought some dice the other day, so I could like do dice readings. Ooh, which I cool. Did automatic gas station, and I was like, I want these from a purse with my deck cards from the purse. You know, yeah. Uh, yep, I did it so many different use, ways. Um, and I, when I first started doing it, I did have tarot cards, and um, and I keep them. You know, I'll, you know, I'll, I just don't, um, I don't use them quite the same way you do. But I have also have um, my big, beautiful, amazing um, crystal ball, and I take her cover off. Right. Of her, um, I like. Staring into that, uh, as far as divination goes, like being able to see, um, I'll never forget the first time um, I was doing a reading with her, and I wasn't expecting to see some of the stuff that came through, but it was it was mediumship based. It was the craziest thing. I saw this lady's husband come through. I mean, I'm like, oh my god, it works! <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it always astonishing? Like when that happens to me, where I'm like, and sometimes it's even like the next day, and I'm like. Ooh, I had that experience last night. Now I remember it. Wow. Yeah, that was it's just cool. I just I think there's so many 
um, different way. And of course, I can always, uh, I look at like the carpet or my ceiling has like popcorn stuff. If I look up, I'll see stuff that way. So there's no wrong way to see and there's no wrong way to, to yeah. channel information. So I go ahead and the one more way. Um, yes. Oh my God. My aunt snapped Fire. a picture the other day. Uh, and you could see, uh, my grandmother in the flame smoking a um, cigarette and having a cocktail. It was really cool. Awesome. That's really cool. Um, um, I, okay, I think one of the the people that had called in is left. So we've got, we still have, um, I'm going to unmute 518, okay? Okay. All right. Are you there, 518? Yes, I am. Hi, guys. How you doing? Hi, Hi. how are you? How you doing? <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> how you doing? What's your name? What's going on? Hi, you, you guys are awesome. I was just really enjoying your conversation. Oh, okay. I can meet. I'll, I'll read. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I would love a reading, though. Okay, good. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. I'm going to uh, – okay, so as always, Selena is my guest, and I always let my guest go first because I have a tendency to talk uh, too much. So, Selena, I'm going to hand it over to you. Well, hi. I'm Selena. And what is your name? My name is Jenny. Jenny, J-E-N-N-Y? That's it. Okay, Jenny. Do you have a question that you want to ask today? I, well, I hate when people do this, but I really don't. But if you need one, I'll give you one. <laughs> um, I don't need to have one, but generally if there's something that you're interested in knowing about, it makes um, the reading, you know, a little bit more for you know, uh, centered as to, you know, like pinpoint something, but if you don't have a question at all, I mean, we can do just a basic little reading. If you don't mind, yeah, just give me what you got, girlfriend. <laughs> all righty, well, give me just a second. I'm going to pull, um, I'm going to use my, my deck, actually. I'm going to use a Rider weight deck, the first deck that I ever got, that I got um, from a thrift store that a friend of mine was like, hey, these are for you. And I said, well, I guess they are for me, aren't they? And brought them home, and they're the ones I learned how to read with. Miss Jenny, what's your birthday? Uh, September 5th. September 5th. Okay. All right. I'm going to shuffle these for a minute. And um, what's the first letter of your last name? <laughs> D. 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 Okay. It helps me to, like, pinpoint you since you're not here with me. No problem. All righty. Let's see here. Give sons. Get children, Miss Jenny. Hello. I'm sorry. Are you, say that again? Are you still there? Uh, do you have children? No, I boys. Don't. You don't have any kids at all. Okay, sorry. All okay. Right. You said boys, though, and there's there is something to that. There's an inside joke. I don't know. <laughs> but is anyway. there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, is it a friend's son, a ch somebody that that you're close with? Their their child? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because um, the first thing I pull up um, in the very center here is is uh, uh, the three of cups. So it's, it's three women standing around together with their cups in the air, and then to each side of it, I, there's a knight. There's the knight of pentacles and the the knight of wands, which is why I asked if there is sons or boys, because they're both they're from each direction, it's looking directly at this, this group of women. Um, yeah, and then um, I've got uh, beneath that, I've got the, the Tower in the Hierophant, which is um, 
uh, the tower is about um, destruction and something changing um, in your life, and it's mirroring with the Hierophant, which is um, kind of like the priest. It's a, it's about institutions. It's someone who like sits up and they're the communicator between the heavens and them. And at the very bottom, I've got the Ace of Pentacles, which is also a new beginning. So I'm feeling like uh, definitely like boy, boy energy with the the two knights that are looking directly at the women. Um, so I mean, it's a joke maybe that a friend of yours' child is like your child? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. And um, did something happen, like, in relationship with him in, the in like, the past? Was there some kind of an upheaval? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, what you're saying makes sense. Okay. Um, yeah, that something happened, like, with him that questions, like, um, the way things are going to be going in the future. Like, if he is going to make decisions to, um, to follow a specific path or not. Um, I, currently, it seems to be as if it's in, in a new beginning and a new place, but he, there's something with him that's going into into the future where, like I said, the, these women are all in the center, this very masculine energy around them. Yeah, no, the, the, the kid we're talking about is going through a tough time, and he's uh, not having a place to stay right now. It's really difficult, you know. It, oh, it's, had to see, and um, he's not accepting any help, that sort of mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's, yeah, that's some, definitely something that's weighing on your mind a lot right now. That's and he's needing what, a, a new start and a new beginning, and he's going to have to, you know, allow people to help him to do that. Yeah, and I, I feel like he will down the road. I, I'm praying about it, sending energy to it, you know, but it's, I guess, divine timing, you know? Right. And when, when he's willing and, and able, you know, within himself to do that, to allow people to help him, it seems like, you know, there's, you know, you and probably his, his own mom and, and so on who he has to support him if he chooses yeah. to do so. But he's going to have to make that decision for himself to start again that's it that's exactly it yeah Yeah. it's hard though you know (laughs) oh yeah it is like when you're seeing someone in a situation and you want to be able to help them um and you want you know to be able to help them to do better for themselves and they have to you have to allow them especially younger people to make those choices and decisions to get to that next place on their own totally Yep. Really good, Selena. Thank you. Wow. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. Well, Michelle, Jenny, what do you got? Jenny, Jenny, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go a little bit of a different direction um, than where than where Selena was going. Um, let's see. Okay, so first of all, I, I do want to tell you the first thing I saw whenever I heard your voice was a big sun coming up over the horizon. So that means to me that a new beginning of something is about to happen for you. There's um, a lot of symbols that I'm seeing that are revolving around spirituality, but it also is showing me um, it looks like coins. So it may have something to do with materialism in some way, but it looks like there's some changes happening. Uh, uh, there's the spiritual and uh Connection with you. I want to say it somehow has to be involved with um, your your uh, spiritual business, okay? Because it, I feel like there's um, solid um, forms that I'm seeing pop that are happening. So the connection is has to do with money more than likely. Um, and <clears throat> the reason I'm bringing that up first is because it was the first thing. It was the first thing that I saw, and it was really strong too, the way that it came through. So I feel like there's um, something really good about to happen cool, nice. um, here, probably in the next few months. Well, it feels really related to um, when I say I'm saying materialism, but I want to say it's it's uh, it looks like coins. So I want to say it somehow involves um, somehow involves finances. 
Um, but I'm also feeling like a, um, a like you're, you're going to be welcoming somebody back into your home or bringing somebody into your home or, or something like that, that it, this is going to be forming a new um, sort of process with this person. I'm not, I'm not sure if they were disconnected with you from a while and you're bringing – Home may be a little bit too far of a word. It could just be back into your energy or into your life. But I feel like there's somebody circling, uh, coming back full circle. So this is somebody uh, that you haven't spoken to probably within a, in a while that seems to be coming back. And it's pulling me really fast, too. Uh, so this may happen sooner rather than later. And when I say by bringing them into your home, I really don't mean necessarily your actual home. This just feels like it's a place of comfort. It feels like family, but it feels like you're bringing them into that sort of environment, so I'm not actually sure if it is. Um, now, do you also know somebody named Mark on the other side? Do you know Mark? Not on the other side that I know of. Okay, I keep hearing the name Mark. Hmm. Mark. Um, I better that's check okay. friend. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. Well, no, it's okay. It just, uh, it's. It, it was getting louder as I was talking, so I wanted to be sure to say it, um, and I'm pretty sure it's related with you because it feels like it's in your um, when, in your energy. But the coolest thing that I wanted to tell you that I see above anything else is I can see your soul looking down at you. And when I'm looking at you and I'm viewing you through your heart, I'm looking up and I'm seeing your soul look right down on you. And the way her eyes set on uh, the top of your crown chakra, she's pouring energy in through that area. So I really feel like there's an expansion happening around the crown chakra, and it goes into the third eye. There's even smaller chakras right around your eyebrows, and your eyes that start to light up. They go behind your ears. So there may be some kind of um, opening up that's, uh, that's happening. It feels heavy on my head, too, so a bit tingly. So it's like one of those, it's a good feeling. I sometimes get that feeling when my chakras open up real wide. Uh, but I do feel like it's an expansion. The love that's coming off of it is just, I mean, it's like weight. It's going through me so fast. I've got my entire body is like nothing but goosebumps. You have a really um, clear, strong energy, and I always love being in it because it makes me feel like um, I can see the world through the compassion that you have, um, and I can feel your compassion. I can feel your love. When I sit in your heart, um, I feel comforted, um, and I know that I'm, I'm sitting in truth. So your light is just absolutely beautiful, um, Jenny, and it's always, always, always a pleasure to be able to sit in, in your energy. Do not make me cry, Shelby. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not trying to. I just, oh, and you, I, like, as, I do, you know, as I'm talking, I drew this uh, this picture in, in, of, of this eye, and it's really representation of your higher self and the amount of love that's being poured um, from it, and there's such stability in that. So I want you to know that I, I know I know things feel, um, you know, sometimes I, I feel like, uh, you know, those boards that you put over like a, a roll of um, something and you stand on it kind of teeter-totters from side to side, but you have to keep your balance. That's what it feels like I'm standing on sometimes, so it feels like I'm trying to balance too much, and it's a little shaky, and my legs feel like they're about to give out sometimes, but I feel like you're very, very supported in, in light and that everything that's happening is is really it's painted with the divine red that I see around um, things that are supposed to be happening, that um, that's what's around you. So, um, yeah, you're super, you're super supported, and uh, I feel like the, whatever, there's newness coming up uh, with, the, with the business stuff, too. So I feel it, something's happening, Jenny. <laughs> I know. Well, you know, just, I, <laughs> I know we were tripping over my words, but something's oh, no, going on. I just want you to know you've already been right about some things, and I should probably say that privately, but you you are amazing, and Selena is also amazing. I'm glad that I was able to, to call and, you. and get in touch with her, too. You've got great vibes, my friend. Um, I'm going to go, but thank you so much, Shelby. Thank and you. I love you. <laughs> thank you so much. Have a great night. I'm going to mute you, okay? Okay. Bye now. Bye. Selena, we have time for one more. There's one more caller. Sure, let's do it. This is somebody at... Hi, hi, hi. this one for you. Hi, it's Adriana. Adriana, how are you doing? I'm good in your thoughts. That's fantastic. You calling for a reading for me? Yes. Perfect. I'm going to let Selena take over. Hi, Adriana. 
Hi, how are you? Good, how are you tonight? I'm good. Great. Do you have a specific question or any type of question or any way that you want to lead your reading? Yeah, um, I wanted to see if possible. Um, I know you're not a doctor or anything, but um, I'm going through some fertility treatment and wanted to know if I'll be successful with it. Okay. Well, let's see. <clears throat> so, uh, have you had some of these fertility treatments before? Um, no, first time. First time. Okay. All right, first time. Okay. So, um, hmm. Well, um, the overall energy of, of what I've gotten here is the Ten of Cups, which is like the, the great happy ending where everybody's, you know, rejoicing and, and holding hands. Um, but I've, in the center here, I pulled um, uh, the Five of Coins, which is, is not – I don't know. This may be something that, that you might have to do more than one time is what I'm picking up. Um, before you get there, it might be more than once. Okay. As, as sometimes with fertility treatments, that's the way it happens. And I could completely be wrong because, like I said, the overall energy is, is a happy, you know, that, that it gets to where it's where you want it to be. Um, but it's going to be a little bit of work before you get there. Lots of, focusing and and concentrating and that possibly this moment like right now may not be the best moment but as it's moving into the is the future that seems to change got it yeah hey adriana how are you doing thank you good so i went into your energy and um i do want to kind of um i i will, I will say that I've got a very similar feeling um, that Selena did. I don't feel conception right now. I don't feel that on you, around you. However, I do feel that you're going to get what you want. So, um, and, you know, she mentioned it not working the first time, and I'm actually curious, do you have these um, set up to where, do you, are you just doing one at a time, or do you have them set up where you go, uh, where you have, like, reoccurring um, times that you're that you're visiting? And also, do, are you, is there, um, are, and again, I'm not, so I have to say this, disclaimer, I'm not a doctor. Make sure you go to a doctor and see a doctor for all your, you know, medical needs, but we're just talking uh, energy here, so um, I can't give you medical advice. But do you have, um, are there some other issues, um, and you don't have to get too personal on air, but are there some other issues around um, obviously, there are some something going on. You wouldn't be taking fertility treatments, but it, um, it almost looks like uh, it's like scarring or something around it, on the on the lower on the lower um, part of your torso, and this is the inside around organs, so probably um, in in that area somewhere. I don't, I don't I'm not really great with um, all that, but are there some other health concerns in that area? It feels real dense in there, so it's hard to move around. Um, are you having issues in that area, inflammation or anything like that? To um, be around no. your ovaries? Um, I had, but um, I just got a chart and it, it went away, so that's good. And I'm not doing like um, in vitro, it's just like medication. 
so that I can, because I'm irregular, so <laughs> the meditation is so that I can be regular monthly. Right, right. And then, you know, obviously. Right. Okay, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. That may be why we are picking up that it's going to take, uh, it's going to take a moment for, ultimately, yes, you're going to get what you want. Is it going to be as soon as you want? Probably not. What I am seeing is some, uh, conflicting sort of, it looks like inflammation is what it looks, I don't want to call it, it, it scar tissue. I just want to call it inflammation, but it is, um, I can, I can feel it when I'm in your, um, in, in that area. So this, uh, and, and if you're irregular, uh, now is this from like, um, and you don't have like fibromyalgia or anything like that. This is just a, this is just for, based on hormones. Yes, this is just, I had um, an IUD for over five years. And that's why you're regular then. Okay. Yeah. I really think, I think that's what I'm, I, I really think that's it. I think that you're going to get what you want, but I think it's going to be a while. I think there's some healing to do in there. It feels very, it feels, when I'm in it, it feels like there's inflammation. I feel, it feels tight. It feels like there's. A lot happening in there, so I feel like maybe your body's trying to to reboot in a way, you know, especially yeah. if you've been on I the did, other medication I did, for like, so long. So are you having headaches too? Are you having some kind of headaches or something associated with the um, uh, medications or something? Um, no, I'm I having some migraines. Um, from oh, okay. Oh, you poor thing. Migraines are. Oh my God, those are awful. I, I never realized how bad they were until um, I was actually sitting in someone's energy and I couldn't, um, that had migraines and I couldn't open my, I mean, it was awful. I just could, I am like, you poor thing. Anytime somebody says they have migraines now, I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. It's terrible. <laughs> um, okay. So, okay. And so I'm going up in your energy and what I'm, all I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm trying to look at the flow of your energy and kind of see if I can give you kind of a better estimated time of maybe when, because uh, the rest of you moves easily, You're, the fl the flow is nice. I don't feel like inflammation anywhere else in your body, um, except for I did have some headaches when I got up around your head. But everything else feels really good. I feel like you're overall in good health. I feel like there's um, some some fresh kind of energy that's going to be coming your way, probably closer to December. I, you know, I feel like you're like you're going where you need to be going. I'm just not sure you're going to get there as fast as you want to get there. But be patient because something good is going to happen for you regarding this. I feel I feel pretty good about saying that. And I think yeah, Selena I, did I too. I feel it too because <laughs> I'm kind of intuitive too, and I've I would be having a lot of you, dreams. Do you have twins that run in your family? I wouldn't be surprised if you have. They do if, if, run. They I don't know do if it's run. twins or if you're having two children, but I do see. I do see two, and they look very yeah. close. They look very close in age. Um, they look very they close in both. age. So, <laughs> oh, does it? Well, I will. You'll have to call me back years. whenever you get pregnant and tell me if you're, yeah. if you're having twins or not. Because it does feel. I, and again, this could be. This could be that you're having two children, but it does. It, they're very close in age, so you're either going to have them back to back. Or, um, but you are, you, I do really feel like you're going to be successful uh, with that, Adrian, I do. Yeah, I'll definitely keep you posted. And, and the, the inflammation that you felt, just so you know, and you're so awesome, is that I pulled a muscle <laughs> um, oh. by my pelvic area, and so I was, like, hurting for, like, three oh, days. Oh, my God, that's terrible. <laughs> I know what a horrible place to pull a muscle. That's no man. That's terrible. Now, do you do also do some kind of? Um, oh, you're intuitive. You said so. You you're doing some kind of spiritual work. I can see that it's like yeah. green and purple around you, and I always see those two colors. Especially, uh, I see the green and purples like that together. Um, and I'm not sure what's exactly up with that. Uh, it's like a higher vibration energy that p pushes through people's body when I see that. So a lot of the time I'll see that color around people that are healers and stuff too. Do you do any kind of energy work? Um, well, I'm, I've been practicing Reiki. Okay. And, okay. Yeah. Well, that's perfect. Um, and running that Reiki, and you may actually find, uh, you may do really well with doing energy work. Uh, you may find yourself, um, Ending up being being a pretty good um, um, I don't know what you I can't think of the word uh, not channeler but 
that able that is able to process that energy. You 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 could do it if you wanted to. Just saying, your energy is pretty warm there, Adriana. I have to back <laughs> out of it just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's no, and it feels good. That's a good sign. You want that kind of energy running through you anyway, especially if you're trying to um, conceive, because that mm-hmm. that heat like that is definitely about healing. So. Yeah. I'd say that's what's going on. And I and I'm so glad you called. Thank you for calling in tonight. Yeah, I appreciate thank you it. So much. Okay, well I'm gonna mute you now. Okay. Thank you, Adriana. Both of you. Good night. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, she was great. So Selena, mm-hmm. one more time, if you want to contact Selena, find her on Facebook. That's the best place you can contact her. Uh she does um she does the she does tarot reading. She's really good at it. Give her uh, connect with her on Facebook. Look and see how she works. Um, work with her and um, check her out. She's awesome. You can also reach me at thirdeyebetty. dot com. You can just type in Third Eye Betty pretty much on any social media platform, and um, and I'll and I'll pop up on there. So Selena, thank you so much again uh, for being here tonight. You are absolutely amazing. And I always Thanks feel so pumped me. up when we work together. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I enjoyed our conversation. Getting to do the readings it was great. Yes, it was a lot of fun. And thank yeah. you, everybody else that came tonight, Christy and Carrie and Jenny and Adriana and everybody else, Kathleen, everybody else in the chat room. We appreciate um, all of you guys. Come back next week. We're going to have Kareen to winter on with us. And we're going to be talking about spooky stuff. So hopefully, hopefully I won't. I won't chicken out. I'm not. I'm not a good scared person. <laughs> I'm not a good scared person. <laughs> anyway, okay. I love you guys. See you next week. Have a good night. Bye.